Hello, this is Russell Tackett, Senior Electronic Sales and Application Engineer for Hydroforce. Today I want to talk about a video that is going to explain the setup of the ECU 0809 using HF Impulse. There will be two videos in this series. One will be a basic setup, taking an analog input, driving two PWM outputs. The second video will be an advanced setup. On the advanced setup, um, we'll be using a slope block to do the same thing, but we'll also have retained variables. So this video, these two videos, will be following the document ECU 0809 HF Impulse First Project. Um, it's a document that you can follow along with if you need more clarification. The steps in this video will document a procedure to create a simple HF Impulse program. The procedure is used to create, um, or is used in these sample videos to assist new users in creating their first HF Impulse program using the ECU 0809. The ECU 0809 controller will be used connected to the configuration harness 4000306. This example will add an analog input through a 10K potentiometer that will drive two coils valve one coil one and valve one coil two. A service tool will be created to modify the min and max current variables values for each coil. Also monitor the signal coming from the joystick. The ECU 809 HF impulse programming reference will be used here. <clears throat> when using another ECDR controller, <clears throat> excuse me, such as the 0101A, the 0201A, the 0203A, or the 0506A, the user manual and technical references should be referenced. Okay, so this, these two videos are kind of um, created as a comparison as another set of videos that were created doing the ECU 0809 with the first CODASYS program. So if you're a user that's kind of wondering what the difference is or how the difference in programming codices versus HF impulse for only the ECU 809, these set of videos can be referenced. The first thing that needs to happen is install codices and HF impulse on your computer. So unlike the other ECDRs that I mentioned, the 101, the 201, the 203, and the 506, the 809 actually uses codices, but the user uh, will use the HF Impulse interface to create codices code. So before the code can be created for the 0809, both codices and HF Impulse need to be installed, including any device drivers. Okay, so on the screen we have the opening screen for Welcome to HF Impulse. So we want to go ahead and create a new file for the 0809. So under File, New, ECU XXXX, ECU 0809001. Okay, let's go ahead and save this. So save as, I'm going to create another um, folder on my on my desktop or on my computer uh, that I'll call uh, HF Impulse First Project. Then I'll give it the same name, HF, HF Impulse First Project. Notice that after I gave it a name, my project name has changed to HF Impulse First Project. We know that we're using the configuration of ECU 0809001. -001. No serial number, runtime version, or hardware version is available right now until we go online with the controller. So if we look at the different tabs, uh, we see we have a CAN setting tab that we can set up the J1939 address and CAN open settings. Uh, we're not going to worry about that during this video. But once again, a great reference for this kind of stuff is the programming reference guide. Main diagram, we'll use that to create our code shortly. 
service tools. So different variables that we create in the code will be um, available here. So we can create a service tool that a maintenance personnel can use to help troubleshoot your system. Proprietary faults, if we had SPN uh, type faults uh, for the system, they could be monitored here. A monitor page is uh, gonna allow us to um, look at four different variables and create charts and do some, uh, some uh, charting or some uh, data logging of, of this type of information. Active faults, fault history, really not gonna cover that in this video. And then communication. So when we initially go to, um, uh, to communicate with EO809, we'll use this tab. I'm gonna to return to the main diagram page. If we expand all the different windows, we'll see the different uh, type of programming um, structures that we have, and, and they're kind of organized. So under the hardware inputs, we see that we have nine inputs available, 0809, the nine describes the nine inputs. On the outputs, we see that we have uh, basically four sets of outputs, but they're grouped into group one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. Um, yeah, and then uh, we'll, we'll get to the other commands in a little bit. But anyway, if you want to experiment, you know, press pause now and then uh, go look at that programming reference guide and kind of look at the different um, the different uh, commands that you have available to you. Okay. So on page 15 of the programming reference, it describes the input blocks. And on the input blocks, I will attempt to bring my this um, uh, document over into our, our recording space. But on page 15 of the programming reference talks about the input blocks. Now, on my particular example, I'm going to use input four because on my programming um, prototype harness, the 4000306 that I mentioned earlier, Input 4 is wired to pin 21, and I want to use that as my analog input. It talks about that input 4, analog input, can be a voltage measurement, a current measurement, or a switch to battery digital input. I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way. So if we bring in input 4, touch the little gear, we see that I can configure it for 0 to 5 volts, 0 to 20 milliamps, or a digital input. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a value, call it analog input, and then X out to give me back to my programming space. Okay, I want to go down and get a scale block. This will work very similar to um, how an EVDR works, an EVDR type controller. So I'll come down to my utility functions, scale block. If I hit the little gear, I can see that Okay, I can put in, for different input voltages, um, drive different output current. So I'm gonna go ahead and say my minimum current. Uh, normally on a analog type joystick, the voltage that it works with would be from a half a volt to four and a half volts with a two and a half volt um, center position. So I want to go drive one coil from a half volt to 2.4 volts to get myself a, a, a tenth of a volt dead band. And then on the other one, I'm gonna drive 2.6 volts to four and a half volts. So my signal minimum here will be 500. We also noticed, on, I'm gonna bring my uh, programming ref or my uh, document reference back in here. We can see that our zero to five volt type input will give us a value of zero to 5,000. So from 500, the signal start would be 500. The signal end will be 4,500, and of course, maximum value of 4,500. For my signal start at 500, I wanna fully drive that valve. So we're gonna put in a value of 1,100, and then signal end, we'll put in a value of 300. Once again, the values that I'm using aren't necessarily uh, for our values of coils, you know, you'd have to go and figure out what coil you're actually using, be it a 12 volt or 24 volt, and then put in the, the correct numbers here. But for our example, I'm, I'm running from 
sorry, 4,500 is incorrect, isn't it? Uh, 2,400 is our value. And then 2,400 is our signal maximum. Okay, so from 500 to 2,400, I'm gonna run a current from 1,100 to 300. And we can see that graphically represented here. Okay. Um, I want to go ahead and pull another, I could pull another scale block or I could just copy this one. So I want to, I have it highlighted. I'll do a control C in my keyboard and then a control V is in Victor. I'll hold down the command or the uh, control key and then I can move this wherever I like. I could have also grabbed it um, with my mouse and moved it. Okay, so for this one, I still want my 1100 to 300, but my signal minimum will now be, I'm gonna work from the top side, signal maximum 4500, signal in 4500, signal start, once again, the center is 2.5 volts, but I wanted a 10th of a volt offset, so 2600, and signal minimum 2600. Now I've got these backwards, so I'm gonna, Change this with 300, and then the 300 changed to 1100. Okay, we could put a comment in here if we wanted to, like output. Maybe output B, where the first one was output A. Output A, okay, there we go. All right, so we've got an input, we've got a couple scale blocks. Um, looking at my reference again, I, I wanna give a better name to analog input. Let's call it AI for analog input, valve command. So, it, it doesn't matter if you spell the names wrong, if you have spaces, if you have um, underscores, you know, this is just strictly a comment. I, I just get in a, a habit of trying to put in underscores when I do um, uh, variable names. Okay, so there we go. So we've got a, an analog input named AI valve command. We've got a couple scale blocks that we put in there. All right, now we need to worry about looking at the outputs. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go up to our output section. And for the outputs that I have wired in my system, I'll bring over my document once again. So the outputs I have wired in my system, I have one wired to output eight and one wired to output five. So output eight will be the, the one that I drive on the first scale block. So I'm going to bring seven and eight in, and then I'm going to bring five and six in. Now, the reason that these are configured five and six, seven and eight, let me bring my document back over again, is that a reference pin or a feedback pin has been um, configured in this uh, uh, NHF impulse. So for output seven and eight, if we run it, want to run it in closed loop current feedback, we have to use feedback pin 35. For five and six, we have to use feedback pin 34. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and wire those up. So I just select my input box. I come down here and wire it to the input of the scale block. The output of the scale block goes to seven. And then the input or the output of the input four block goes to scale block B, and this one goes to five. I also want to throw in a couple monitor blocks. Um, if, if I was developing the code, I wouldn't necessarily have the outputs connected to it, so I would want to be able to monitor the variables in real time. So I want to come down here to my CAN block, or my CAN section, and bring in a monitor block. I want to duplicate that, so monitor one, monitor two. Okay. 
probably make this look a little better. So I'm just I'm selecting it and I hit the control key to move them around. Once again, I'm just trying to just trying to organize it a little bit. Okay, there we go. So we got monitor one, monitor two. We could give uh, names to monitor one. Uh, this would be output eight. And then this one would be output five. Output eight, output five. Okay. So this should be our configuration. Let's go ahead while we're here to create the service tool. So if I come over to the service tool section, we've noticed that um, I don't have any control parameters. Uh, that'll be video two where we add some control parameters. But our monitor block, I've got input four with a comment of AI valve command, analog input valve command, input four. Um, my seven and eight, I really don't have any comments there. I didn't add anything. Then monitor one and two or output eight and output five. Come over to the OC or ECU 08 or 09 tab and hit export. This will allow me to create um, a service tool. So I'm going to go ahead and label it service tool. Okay. Let's go ahead and save our application. All right, it is time to go online and test our code. I'm going to turn on my global power supply. As I mentioned earlier, I've got an ECU 809 controller. I've got a 12 volt power supply. I've got a Kvasser USB to CAN adapter connecting to my prototype harness of 4,306. And I've got a couple of Hydroforce coils. So I want to come down to the communication section. I've, uh, I can either select the uh, USB to CAN adapter, the Kvasser, or the Peak. So I want to select the Kvasser. I'm going to do a search. So what it's doing is going out and it's pulling the CAN bus line to try to find the controller. We'll let it search for a little while. And there it's found it. It says uh, on uh, source address 127. Hydroforce, model number ECU-809, there's our serial number, and a CODA Society. I select it, select device. I'm going to come back over to my ECU-809 and write this um, configuration down to the controller. So once again, this is um, a CODIS' front end, HF Impulse is, in this particular controller. So you could see there at, um, a second ago where it says creating the CODIS' code. So that's why we have to have CODIS's 2.3 on the computer that you're trying to operate. So this will take a, a short period of time to write all this down. So when we get this down, we'll do two things. We'll monitor the variables in our monitor tab, and we'll also bounce out to the service tool to monitor it there. Just a short time longer. If you did watch the videos on parts one, two, and three, you'll notice that um, we don't have to do a, a backbone file for HF Impulse. So that is one, one benefit of doing things with HF Impulse and not codices. Very good, write complete. So I'm going to go ahead and log on to the controller. Notice in the lower right-hand corner, I've got an online status bar. It tells me that I'm communicating. Graph 1, I want to select input 1. Graph 2, I want to select monitor 1. Graph 3, monitor 2. Hmm. Input one is not correct. Input four is what we used. If you recall over here on the main diagram, input four is what we used. So my mistake. 
Back to monitor one. So we see we've got a value of 2570, which represents 2.57 volts. If I increase the voltage, 2.7, we see that we start to drive a current to monitor two. So if we notice it, I can come down to right at 2600, I'll jump to 300. And if I take him up to 4.5 or 4500, we'll be driving 1100. Anything over 1100 goes back to zero. Same thing happens if I go below 2400. So he drives 300 up to 1100 the other direction. And we got some nice graphs we can look at too. Putting back to a neutral position, 2550. We'll go ahead and log off here. I'm going to do a file save. And then I want to close. Do a file open. Look at our service tool. Okay, and then I can go online to my service tool. If I come to my parameters, we can read the same values, but I'm not restricted to the four variables I was on the monitor tab. If I increase the value, we see that I'm driving both output 5 and monitor 2, same value. And then if I reduce the value, I'm doing the same thing for output 8 and monitor 1. Okay, this concludes the first video. Um, we'll go ahead and pause now and create the second video, which is the advanced setup using the slope plot. Thank you.